be more like the left aorta part of the Albuquerque, because the heart is like down there a little bit. And so, uh, hello and welcome to the stream. Twitch tells me we are now live. Um, the first order of business uh, is highlighted, although because it's highlighted in gray, it sort of looks like it's the opposite of highlighted. Um, the answer I gave yesterday to find the, uh, the closest point to a given point on a great circle was completely wrong. And it was completely wrong because I made, I did two things that individually would be okay, but that you can't combine. Uh, one thing I did is I used a straight line that goes through the Earth for the path. That's fine because you can just project that line to the sphere to get the actual coordinates. Um, and because if the distance between two things as a line is, le you know, distances that are less as straight lines are also less as great circles. You can actually prove that and even come up with a formula that converts from straight line distances to, um, to great circle distances. Um, and the other thing I did was, um, let's see, yeah, I think, let's, okay, now what the hell did I do wrong? Um, so that, w that so, th so basically what I was doing, um, since I wasn't projecting the vector, I was using uh, Pythagorean distance to measure how far two points were on a sphere, and unless I, I mean, that, that's okay to do if both of those vectors are actually, uh, you know, touching the sphere, but one of them was not, because I, I had drawn the straight line that doesn't touch the sphere. So I could have fixed that by either extending the line that I drew so it touches the sphere, or what we're going to actually try doing today, which is uh, instead of uh, using um, Pythagorean distance to measure distance, we can just use the, uh, the angles between the uh, two points on the sphere, because that's, that's the same thing. And it's actually somewhat easier to measure because uh, we can use the dot product to get something that looks like the angle. And the other bad thing I did, which is not, not a mistake, but just sort of a bad decision, I mean, it's not inaccurate, um, I tried to use uh, spherical coordinates and convert them to XYZ coordinates. Uh, of course, the coordinates will be given will always be spherical, but I think we could have just assumed the conversion ahead of time and considered these to be three three-dimensional points instead of what I was doing, which was uh, trying to treat them as uh, three points on a sphere, convert them, figure out an answer, and convert them back. We'll still need to do that, but it's, it's simpler if we sort of start off with 3D points. Okay, so now that I have uh, said all the bad stuff I've done uh, relating to this, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can, um, we can fix this. Okay. And... Okay. Oh, wow. All right, and as, al and as always... Um, I always start a new section here just so... When I look back at this, I'll know how I screwed, how badly I screwed up on what day. Um, so, so we're just going to start fresh today, but we will cut and paste from previously. We're not going to totally be blind to what we've done before. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this done. Uh, let's go ahead and refer to point B now as just um, a, a the list B X B Y B Z, and the destination point D as being D X. D Y D Z and ah, okay, and I see it. I see it. Um, the destination point will now be called F. Nope, it won't. G H. God damn it! I'm gonna run the letters. Fine. Just th we're gonna go from A to B. I'm gonna regret this. I don't want to say D X D Y D Z because th th those usually mean derivatives. Uh, B is going. The target point is going to be B. So not like before. We're going to use uh, consecutive letters to mean the, the, and the middle point, the C point is going to be C. Okay, so we're traveling from A to B, and how, to B or not to B, I have God, how close do we get to C? Okay, we'll use the same um, point at time, we're going to use the same sort of formula that we had here. Uh, which very, you know, basically just says you start off at A, you go to B. Again, this is a along a line through the center of the sphere, so it doesn't preserve distance. Um, and it doesn't have a length of 1. The, the vector that I'm describing here does not have a length of 1. And that is actually the, the thing that got me into trouble last time. But we, we will be able to deal with that. I, maybe, I don't know. Okay, um, so if time... Oh, no, 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 PT. If T is 0, this is just... Uh, T is zero, this is just A. 
Um, because, let's see, because this is 0 times something. When t is 1, this is a plus b minus a, which is b. So this is the vector that goes from a. This is the uh, time-changing vector that starts at a and goes to b and isn't necessarily um, on the surface of the sphere. So let me see if math x, uh, which I don't know why the hell I'm still using it, um, let's see if it has a vector angle function. I think it does. Uh, and I don't know if it, uh, it understands dot products. It does. Cool. Uh, I'm not actually going to use it now that I think about it, but it's kind of nice to know that. Okay. So if we want to find the distance from, well, right now we just want to find the angle to C. So that's just going to be uh, point T dot CX, CY, CZ divided by the norm of the two, um, well, this is actually the cosine of the, uh, the cosine of the angle between them, but that, that's not a huge deal. Um, so we take the dot product and we divide by the product of the norms, which I didn't do last time. Because we assume C is a point on the sphere, it has norm one, we're fine there. The point problem we're going to run into is the norm of PT itself. And I think I need parentheses here. And this will be cosine of the angle at time t. And I think we're actually going to want to square that. But let, let's see how, let's see, let's go ahead and restart this because um, cause it's weird. Okay, hang on, I need to go. <laughs> yeah, always weird when you, when you un a start and stop secure shell uh, file system. Okay, let's go and do this. I am pretty sure all of this should work fine. Good deal. Seeing it zero, actually I don't know if that's going to be... Yep, seeing it one, seeing it one half is going to be much uglier of course. Um, and one of the sort of bad things you'll notice here is we have a square root involved, uh, which we do not want. Oh actually, sorry, I'm gonna l let's go ahead and look at it in general. Uh, t is, of course, the thing that's going to vary. That's the thing we're going to need to uh, find the maximum for. Um, I am so freaking tempted to just do this. Well, let's see. Well, let's take the derivative of the uh, the co cosine of the angle at t with respect to t. And let's solve that equal to 0 for t. This is not going to work, but if it does, I'll be impressed. Yep, doesn't know how to solve that. And I'm actually okay with that, because what I actually want is, um, I actually want the square of this value. It's actually going to be a lot easier to deal with. And then if we have problems, we ourselves, as human persons or whatever, can see, uh, let's see. Really? Let me take a look at that real quick. Okay, complicated, complicated over absolute value. So the, the square has gotten rid of the nice, um, the, the square root. Uh, the problem we might have here is, um, I really didn't want those absolute values hanging out there. Um, uh, huh. Now let's see if we can come up with the derivative of this with respect to t, and solve for that equal to zero. It's thinking. Um, nope, it doesn't want to be solved that. Okay, and I really, let's see if we can get rid of those, um, oh wow, um, AX plus T times, oh god damn it, this is ugly, um, there are even other ways of doing this, uh, and in fact I've actually written functions that do this in Mathematica and have converted them to other languages. Um, so one way to do it is to move our points A and B so that they're on the equator. One of them's at the prime meridian and the other is just at some, uh, you know, on the equator at some other longitude. And then whatever C is moved to, it's very easy to determine, um, you know, basically where on the, on the arc, on the equator you are closest to C. Um, I don't know if I want to do that. Um, So, yeah, um, there's a lot of ways to, but to not solve this. Let me go ahead and sign into Wolfram Cloud anyway, as you can see here. 
I I want a new one. I don't actually know how the hell what I'm doing here, but oh. Oh, okay. We'll just call this um, Fadist. Um, rename and keep. Okay. Good deal. So that one is presumably somewhere there. All right. Now let's go ahead and do this. Let's actually just, since it's mathematical, we'll torture it with the Cang. But we're not going to try to. We won't square it yet. Okay. Um, and because this should actually, you know, I didn't want this in a separate cell. I wanted this in this cell. And then I wanted an evaluation. Okay, that's kind of weird. No, it's not, because I forgot to add in my definitions of A, B, and C, which are vectors, not points. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm really bad at this. Okay. And okay, I, I can't even cut and paste well. That's a, that's like a sad a state of affairs. Okay. So now let's see C angst, uh, which is the only thing we're printing out. Everything else has a semicolon in front of it. Yep, that looks pretty good. Um, I could, I mean, Mathematica has a built-in function called minimize, which sometimes, well, almost never works. But who knows, maybe it'll work today. Yeah, and, and it won't. Okay. Um, take the derivative with respect to C. Solve when it's equal to zero, or solve. That is uh, Yugoslavian for solve. I did not know. Okay. This problem cannot be solved with... Ma yep. I said it before it came up because I knew it was going to say that. Alrighty. I did not see that not coming. So I did see that coming. Okay. This also won't work, but... I've got time. Oh! Motherfucker. Okay, I wish to I wish to go full motherfucker on this, please. Um. Wow. So when t is equal to that, presumably we have the uh, the minimum distance. Okay, did not expect that. So that. Probably is the minimum for seeing also, but it doesn't like that because there's square roots in there or something, so it gets confused. I am in awe of the solution. Give me one second. Let me make sure seeing T isn't something stupid. That looks correct. Alrighty. Now, last time we had some trouble cutting and pasting the solution, and doubtless we will again. Um, right, okay. That's coolish. There's probably a better way of doing this. Oh, I know what it is. Okay. So, we have the solution. We want the 1-1 one, one term for it, I think, which is going to be that. And can we, can, can we cut and paste that? Well, probably not. I mean, it's probably going to be... But it's going to be less ugly, maybe. Nope. Equally ugly. Okay. Um, can I... I can't even do that. Okay. So then I can just say T given this. Um, but can I cut and paste this properly? Um, maybe if I cut and paste it, then paste it over here. Now, see, it doesn't freaking want, let, let me do that. And again, it's not, it doesn't like this. I, I think I found a way to cut and paste this last time, but I don't remember it now. Um, settings, oh. Copy as plain text. Go, go for it, yeah. 
That might be what I wanted. Boo frickin' yeah. Okay, so presumably the shortest point will occur when t is equal to this. There's a slight concern um, that if t is bigger than 1 or less than 0, uh, it's not a point on the flight anymore. You've ended or, you know, it's after you end or before you begin your flight. We will handle that case. Um, now, last time when we came to something like this, I was really impressed because um, I said, hey, why don't we put this, um, and I think we'll call this T valve because we don't want to lose it. Why don't we put this back in and see what the, the actual uh, distance is um, when, you, when you put it back in? And, and then see if there's something clever falls out of it. So seeing two of T val, let's look at that. Um, so this is T val. And then I want to see seeing, let's see seeing two of T val first. And then let's see if that, that gives us anything useful. I think we need to put a simplify in front of it. is interesting. Uh, so the distance is zero there. Not cool. Okay. And I think the... Yeah, I don't know what the problem is. We are looking for a solution only in the real numbers. In the complex numbers you can cruft up T to actually uh, be anything you want. So let's see if that, that helps. And thinking. But I'm actually sort of confused because this formula that it gives us, um, I should be able to put it into anything, right? I mean, that's... That's kind of weird. Okay. Okay, we're going to go ahead and stop this here in a sec. Um... Okay, that's not what I wanted. Let's try that again. Okay, something weird. Oh, because I put in the word reels here. Maybe that's the problem. And I'm also combining a lot of steps here, which I probably shouldn't be doing. I should probably be doing a little bit more slowly and, and sort of get my derivatives one at a time. Um, I think I've broken it now. Awesome. Okay. Oh, I think... Oh, I wasn't even in the cell. Hang on. Let's try it now. Okay, whoa, whoa, okay, I guess I did it three times. So I guess what I'm not seeing here is um, how that could not be a real number. Um, I mean, it could be negative, but it, we're multiplying a bunch of real numbers together. And, um, okay. All right, so let's go ahead and do be a little bit more uh, verbose here, because I think this is excessively bizarre. Well, that worries me. Uh, we'll call it CA2D of T is the derivative of CA2 of T with respect to T. And let me start putting in some, um, let me go ahead and put in some preconditions here. Everything here is real. It's not necessarily positive, but it's real because these are points 
on a sphere. And actually, we also know that um, ax, ay, az squared add up, adds up to one because it's on the on the sphere. I don't think we want to give it that information. I think it'll just confuse it. Okay. So this I don't think can be simplified. Let's go ahead and simplify this. Um, okay. And then simplify this. And this one I actually want to see. And then simplify this. Oh, sorry, I do want to see this one, and then we'll look at the next one and so on. And then we want to simplify this with respect to cons. And then, don't want to see that. Well, actually, I should probably just put what I want to see at the end. So now let's see what seeing T looks like. Damn it, I put a semicolon in front of it. Okay, let's try that again. Okay. So the derivative of... Oh, this is what the C angle is. Uh, okay. Its derivative with respect to T is equal to something so big it takes more than one page to show. And that's with freaking simplifications. Okay. All right. Um. Yep. This looks a little bit too cozy for me. All right. And the, I think here we can actually say one one. Um, and then I think I can just say one one two because t arrow is t is one part. There we go. So I should be able to say t val equals this sucker. And now I can ask the question that I don't want to ask. Uh, well, what is the point on t val? Let's go one step at a time. So if this is the t val, what's the point on t val? And maybe we can simplify that a little bit. Uh, under cons. Yeah, that didn't really simplify at all, did it? Yeah, okay, that's coolish, I guess. What is the C angle? What is the angle at, uh, or the actually, this is actually the cosine of the angle, and that's why I keep calling it Kang. Co yeah. That should not be possible. Unless I've done something really stupid. I wouldn't pa put it past me. Uh, let's see. We're going from A to B, and this is the... angle made with C. Um, why, why can it be... Um, I mean, there should be no reason here at all there should be any sort of cancellation. Um, I mean, it looks hideous. Oh, uh, now I'm beginning to wonder if putting in t at that value gives you infinity or something. In other words, if we the denominator becomes zero, then this is not a valid fraction. So let's... It's very bad that Mathematica is saying this is equal to zero, if that is the case. Let's take a look at the denominator here. Okay. Oh, well, it doesn't become zero, or if it does, not in an obvious way. All right, let's look at the numerator. This is the thing that, I guess, becomes zero, that magically. Okay. Oh, I think I might actually want to do this, the numerator after you've switched over to t -bell. That doesn't look like zero to me. And I'll simplify it, but...
No, okay, it does look like zero, apparently. Okay, so I'm confused as to why uh, this uh, claims there's a point on T where the cosine is, oh yeah, that's why. Um, when the cosine is zero, uh, the angle is uh, n 90 degrees. Uh, so that is actually a, quite a bit of distance. And all they're saying here is, if you go long enough on line AB, you can find a point where you're 90 degrees away from C. So clearly, that is that is not the derivative I wanted. I wanted the other case where, um, well, I wanted where C angle is equal to, to uh, you know, zero. Uh, no, C angle is equal to minimize. Um, so apparently, the the condition that we've solved for is is the condition we don't, the one we don't need. We want the other one, so to speak. Uh, so let's see. So we're going to change this instead of solve to say reduce, uh, and we're going to find the what for us is actually the um, the important solution, uh, and we don't care about this anymore. Um, now let's see what it is, because the one solution we got is excellent, marvelous, and totally useless to us, and the other solution with reduce should give us the solution where, um, unfortunately, it's also going to give us a lot of other solutions we don't want to hear. Yeah, this could be a nightmare. Yep. I kept I kept wondering why this problem was so difficult, given that how I mean it it seems like it should be an easy problem. Okay, so you're not going to reduce it for me. That's nice. Um, all righty. All righty. It's time to get. It's time to go Gangnam style. I don't know. Well, I do kind of know what that is, but okay. So the first thing we want to know: this is the second derivative of. Uh, sorry, this is the <laughs> derivative of uh, angle squared. Um, um, and we want it to be equal to zero, except at that trivial case we already found. Um, so now we can let's take the numerator of the damn thing. And because we know the denominator, the only thing we need to know is the denominator is not zero when the numerator is zero, because that creates a Okay, and maybe let's simplify that puppy. Okay, with respect to the conditions that we have. Simplify, and you are equal to... God damn it, seriously? That's the freaking numerator. Let's see if we've got a tech. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. <laughs> I meant to look at it in tech, not put it in tech form. Okay. Okay. We will call this NC2, because I'm running out of, because I don't want to think about variable names. So this is the numerator, and then let's see if we can do this. And get the answer that's not the stupid answer we already have. Okay, that's the answer we already have. Um, yep, I am, I'm stumped. Another thing we could try is we can extend point T to the sphere. It's, it's currently its norm is not big enough to go to the sphere. Uh, but we can extend it to go to the sphere. I don't think that's going to buy us much. We'll call it PTS, point on sphere, for T, is equal to point of T over... Well, like equal would be nice here. Over norm t. Norm point of t, actually. Um, so let's see what that looks like. And yeah, that's just going to be this ugly, hideous thing. But it is now technically on the sphere, so we can now uh, take its distance from... Um, uh, from from C. Uh, so this is the point on the sphere. We can certainly take its distance from C to get this. I should probably put a simplify in there first. Oops, uh, bad, bad syntax. Um, still pretty ugly. 
Um, put some T, okay. And I could certainly, but not very cleverly, differentiate that with respect to T and get this and then solve that. God damn. Even I don't think I'm going to be able to do this one. I mean, I don't think it was zero, zero for T. And we're either going to get um, solve, can't solve this, or the answer we got before, which is the one that's not very useful to us. Or it will hang forever. That's the other possibility. Let me, try, let me do this real quick. And we'll let it hang for a little bit more, and then we're going to give up. Um, while it's doing that, let me see if anyone's in chat. Oh, hello, people in chat. Good to see you. You may speak if you wish. You may remain silent if you wish. It's a free stream. Okay, so this isn't going to work. Uh, it's going to time out too much. So this seems like a really simple problem, and it kind of bugs me that it doesn't have a simple answer. Um, yeah, aborted, because I aborted it. Um, this, this is not, this should not be a, a hard problem. Um, so, so why is it a hard problem? Okay, let's go back to another approach that I had, um, which I think actually does work, but it's extremely complicated. I mean, you know. Yeah, the full matrix here, what this matrix does, holy moly, inverse of the full matrix, okay. So let's go ahead and use, this is the full matrix and it has an interesting property of that I don't know. No, it has an interesting property. Um, okay. Uh, what is that interesting property you ask? I don't know. Let's find out. Uh, let's go and put this into math. So this actually does have an interesting property. It's just very ugly. Okay. We won't even bother with the inverse for right now. Whoa. Wait, I can't paste that in multiple lines one line at a time? Oh no. Oh, it needs it all to be on one line. All right, we can do that, uh, but I'm not gonna do it here. I'm gonna do it, um, I'm not, I'm gonna do it in temp.mathics because that is just, and then we'll just, we'll just call it in like a, okay. And then we wanna do, hang on, write region to file tilde temp.mathics, which I actually created already, which is kind of a bad thing. But All right, so now we can look at temp.mathics. Uh, yes, we're gonna reread it. Uh, replace all the new lines, control or return, with spaces. Booyah. I hope it accepts that. Nice. It takes a while to just print it, but... Okay, so what property does this have? Well, um... I, I'm hoping the property that it has is if you take the spherical to XYZ of, um... Theta 1, Phi 1, and 1, you get a freaking horrible mess. No, we, we, this actually should simplify out pretty nicely. Um, nice, huh? So this is the matrix that will take Theta 1, Phi 1 on the, on the sphere to the point uh, 1, 0, 0. And uh, if you're wondering, the point one zero zero has the property that its latitude and longitude are easy to determine, um, and they are zero zero. Th where the prime meridian crosses the equator. Okay, so still not super impressive. Okay, where does it take theta two and theta phi two? Uh, it's going to be uh, 
Um, it's not going to be the same point, obviously. That would be not very useful. It's going to be a point that if it ever gets around to doing it, um, um, oh, did I not put, I did put a simplify there. Um, the thing to notice here is the last coordinate is zero. So if we x, y, z to spherify this, the point is it's going to be on the equator. The longitude won't be zero, but the, lati the latitude will be zero. And that makes everything really easy to compute. B after you've done this hideous com computation, find this matrix. Yes, I'm chewing on ice. No ASMR intended. Yeah, I probably should have put a simplify in front of that, too. I don't know if it actually will. Hey! Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. Um, I'm going to bore your viewers to death, but TTORP is Simpy. Now, this is actually a program called Mathix, which is based on Simpy. Um, hello, hello, Natalo. Hello, Cairo Chiroptical. It's almost like chiropractic, but not quite. Hello, hello, Natalo. Hello, TTORP. Thank you so much. Um, I'm using Mathix, which is based on um, uh, Simpy, because I am used to um, I'm used to Mathematica, which is which has this format here, which is Mathix was developed to be similar to to, to Mathematica. Uh, hello, got it. Okay, great. Um, and I, I'm also using Wolfram Cloud. This is free. Anyone can get to this this level of Wolfram Alpha, so I'm not... Wolfram Cloud, sorry. It's not Wolfram Alpha. It's Wolfram Cloud. Um, so I, d I don't feel too bad about coding in this language because you could get to it if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to use Mathematica because that is a commercial product and it's not free. So this is also commercial, but it is free. Uh, so, um, so this is okay. I see. All I see is cute world, world with hat and very nice... cute wolf with very nice hat. <laughs> That's my avatar, dude. Um, awesome stream. What OS is? This is Linux. This is CentOS Linux. I'm in Emacs here. I'm in um, I'm in CentOS Linux here. And I'm trying to get this to simplify, but apparently it doesn't... Uh, Mathix is not known to be very not efficient. Um, but we can work on that. Um, okay, hopefully, Natalo, you've, you've gotten over my avatar and are now looking at my, uh, my stream, uh, where I have some windows going on here. Um, so let's see. Okay, hopefully. Okay. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, if you want to tell, you know, if you want to look at something else, uh, that's cool. I, I, you know, this is just kind of time killing right now, which, which is my life pretty much. Uh, so let me know. What we're trying to do now is something, something that's really, really simple. Um, and yet it's really, really difficult for some reason. If you are on the great, if you draw, if you're flying from A to B or B to A, whatever, you will fly on the great circle line. Let's assume that not, I mean, you can't always because in real life, but you would. And then let's say you have this thir third point. You want to know where on this flight exactly where will X be closest to uh, your path. Not a difficult problem, but, um, but a real bitch to solve. Um, I mean, just insanely bitchy to solve. Um, and the obvious approach is to like, you know, say, well, you can parameterize this line. That's not hard. Um, and then you could take the dot product with x, which is how you get the angle, the cosine of the angle, actually. Um, and that's not hard either. But, um, but minimizing that value, that, that distance, so you know where the closest point is and what the distance is, is a pain in the freaking ass. Um, and in fact, uh, okay. I'm going to go ahead and put this in, um, in Mathix. Mathix, not Mathix, I'm sorry. In Wolfram Cloud, which will handle it. Um, let me say new notebook, and we're going to call this um, uh, dot product fail. That sounds like a good name for it. Okay. Rename and keep. Now, I did come up with this matrix at one point in time, and I 
I figured it out. Um, and that's work that's not done on stream. That was work that was done somewhere else. Um, and it does have the very nice property uh, that um, uh, that if assuming I do this correctly, so that's it's a hideous matrix. I mean, it's it's a really really ugly matrix. Um, but it has the property that. Well, first of all, let me go, uh, I need to define, I don't have spherical XYZ defined. Uh, hang on, I need to define spherical XYZ here again. Um, and then we're going to do something, if I proceed along this path, I might do something so ugly uh, that uh, that it's going to be very, that it's just screamingly ugly. But first, let's go ahead and get this in here. These are some functions that just convert from X Cartesian coordinates to spherical coordinates, not very deep. Uh, but we need, uh, Jesus freaking Christ. Okay. So the, if we convert, um, you can sort of see from the, the way this matrix is written, theta 1, phi 1, radius 1 to spherical coordinates, apply the full matrix to it, um, we will get a very simple answer. Uh, which is not what I thought that would be. Okay, really? Hang on. Let me make sure I've actually assigned full map correctly. It might be that it's just not... Ooh, no, 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 not full ma, full map. Okay. Something is wrong, let's see. Ooh! Aside from the fact it wants to keep jumping my cursor around, I have... I put a full mat that's sort of, uh, floating. So let's do this. Format is this hideous um, is this hideous matrix, but it has the property. Well, let's go ahead and just make sure it's going to print out now. Wow, this thing is making my cursor jump everywhere. It doesn't like the fact that I've cut and pasted so much crap. Let me just move it down manually then. Okay, come on. Still. Um, what am I doing wrong here? Um, okay, let me, I think my parentheses are balanced. Well, let me get rid of the semicolon and see if it reports an error in what I'm trying to do. Maybe that's why it's unhappy. I think there's an error message here, but um, assuming a matrix, use a list of lists instead. No, this is a matrix. We're good. Um, is there a space here there shouldn't be? Well, you can never tell. I think maybe there's a space here. That's the problem. Now, it takes me three tries to just get the damn matrix to be defined. Okay, good. Now, the, the special property it has uh, is if you convert theta 1 phi 1 and on a sphere of radius 1, uh, and you multiply it by this matrix, which is a... Holy crap. Seriously? And simplify the result. I swear to God, I'm with... All right. Okay, the problem here is that Mathematic allows things to be um, complex values. So here it's being ultra careful and assuming um, that the values could be complex. So we need to add these conditions here that say all of our angles are not only real numbers, uh, but they are also between what you would expect uh, latitude and longitude to be. So let's go ahead and add these conditions. Let's go ahead and hit return here so we this won't give us any output, but we do need to um, we do need to put it there. And so now we're going to simplify this, given these conditions. And God willing, you'll see what I've been trying to show for the last three hours. What the hell? I mean, how Mathematica got this one right? I mean, Mathics got this one right. Why can't you? Maybe it doesn't understand what my cons are. Oh. 
Oh, 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 my mistake. Sorry. Well, I was printing out the huge matrix in addition to the, the simplified value. So now let's look at the simplified value. One, zero, zero. And actually, let me see if I can do that without the simplify. Um, nope, I can't. I'm, do I really need the conditions is the question I have? I, I think I might, actually, but let's see. No, gorgeous. So the nice thing about this is it takes theta 1, phi 1 uh, to the equator, where the equator and the primary region cross. That's good. Now what does it do to theta 2, phi 2? Well, as you would expect, it does something similar to that, though, then. Uh, not identical, though, but similar. And... Uh, yes. The, the important thing to notice here, I mean, this is ugly, this is ugly, but the z-coordinate is zero, which means this point, is, it takes both theta 1, phi 1, and theta 2, phi 2 to the equator. One of them to the prime meridian, and the other one to a different latitude that is not the prime meridian. Um, now, of course, these are spherical coordinates, these are uh, Cartesian coordinates. Uh, we would normally want them as spherical coordinates. Uh, and this is where I think, if I do, I'm doing this right, um, you will see that these, these spherical coordinates are very, very simple. Except, of course, I said XYZ sp instead of XYZ two sphere, like I meant. And then you'll see the, um, the what we're going to see here is, holy crap. What we're going to see here is that one of these freaking values is supposed to be, Jesus, effing Christ. Oh, I've got Implify in here. Simplify. And I'll simplify again after we do the transformation. And God willing, we will see that this is, um, yeah, hideous, arctan of hideous things divide, I'm surprised that doesn't simplify further, but okay, zero, that's the latitude is zero. Okay, so the whole point here was this matrix will take theta 2 theta uh, and phi 1 and theta 2 for blah blah, both of those angle, both of those uh, points in arbitrary uh, spherical space both of those points that can be arbitrary points on the sphere to a point, to two points on the equator. Then we can use the translation of uh, theta 3 phi 3, the point we're interested in, and it's then very easy to calculate which one, you know, because we're looking at the equator basically, to calculate where it is greater, greatest and, and uh, least, where the distance is the least. I'm going to babble incoherently here for a second. Um, oh my god, we have more users now. Amazing. Okay, does anyone have any questions, uh, thoughts, suggestions, uh, whatever? I don't have song requests turned on, but aside from that. Um, so one way to do this problem would be to use this matrix, because th once we do it, this is actually not that hard to use. I mean, once we've come up with the matrix, it's not that hard to use. And we can even find its inverse, uh, which is even more hideous than this, and I don't want to do, I mean, you know, we can c compute it. Uh, so this is one way to do this problem. I don't think it's the best way. Um, uh, another way to do the problem is, uh, I guess I haven't thought about this. Um, there is a formula for great circle distance that just uses angles. I mean, it, it's very, uh, it's called the um, Haversine formula. Um, and I might actually have it defined in, in my Mathematica library. I do not. Um, and I guess in theory we could use, you know, we could just compute the distance. Um, oh, right, right. The problem with the, the this is we, we kind of need to know the path that goes from A to B. Uh, the, the, the Great Circle flight is not a very obvious flight. It doesn't, for example, the longitudes don't increase steadily. The latitudes, I think the latitudes actually do uh, do increase and decrease steadily. Uh, no, actually, it's not true, because if you fly from Albuquerque and Tokyo, which have the same latitude, the, you actually end up flying through, like, part of Alaska. Um, so, so that's the other problem here is... Uh, we need to know what the points on the great circle path are, which we can do. Um, we can even do it. Um, oh, here it is. So this is the GC dist in Perl. 
Um, and this tells you what the distance is, not a problem. And I think I even have one that tells you if you're traveling along the Great Circle um, where you are. Okay, here it is, GC stats. So what this does is it finds the latitude and longitude that is R of the distance between uh, two points that are given. Um, but unfortunately, it's just... I don't think there's a, I mean, there is a closed form formula for this. It's just extremely ugly. So now we're going to do something that, um, the reason I'm not crying like a baby here is because there's actually something sort of interesting I wa I've wanted to do for some time on, on stream. I've done it off stream before. Is to talk about, um, can we find the closed form formula for this? And the weird, and I mean, this is a closed form formula for the matrix, but can we find a, closed form formula for the answer we're trying to get. And the answer to that is it turns out yes, and it's hideous, and yet it still is pretty cool. Uh, and for that, I'm going to introduce you to what I call Rosetta, which everyone names. Um, let's see. The idea here is we're going to take a closed form given to us by Mathematica, or Wolfram Cloud, and theoretically even by mathics, and convert it into various different languages. They have to be closed form because most languages, um, because this is just a single function, and you know it doesn't take multiple instructions and and do and convert them. I suppose it could now that I think about it. <coughs> Excuse me, but this only works on single functions, and they have to be in this weird form. But, um, and just, um, where's the freaking documentation? It's nice that I don't have this. New chords. New angles. Um, secant, uh, and that, the secant is a very simple function, it's just 1 over cosine. Um, okay, well why the hell don't I have new chords, uh, documented? Oh, C, B, C, B, B, C, Fuji, dot M. So I think this is the one that actually, that, <coughs> excuse me, um, converts this is the one that uh, multiplies by that hideous matrix we saw um, but let me actually follow the instructions and look at BC Fuji um, I don't know where it is but luckily Mathematica will let me get away with this uh, uh, Emacs will let me get away with this little kludge here um, new chords that doesn't tell me anything um, gee, it would be nice to know what the hell New Chords does. Um, okay. HR theta, azimuth, latitude, longitude. So that's clearly not what I want. It takes too many variables here. We're looking for something that takes basically lat one, you know, two latitudes, two longitudes. Well, three of them actually. And no, actually two of them, and converts them to to a new space. Uh, so this isn't it. Um, I might not call them lat one and oh. Okay. This converts. Um, this does something else that is not useful to us right now. And what this does is it basically tells you um, if you're at a given latitude. Uh, and you want to know how... Pff, actually, I'm not going to explain it. Sorry. Because it's not the one we want. We're going to see if we can find one that we actually want. Um, BC functions... I, th I don't know why it would be in the astro astronomical functions, but it actually might be. And it actually might not be. All right. Um, now, of course, I could just take this matrix that we found uh, you know, and, and convert it into a function. 
Um, which I thought I'd done that actually. That's that's why I'm kind of surprised here that I haven't uh, that I'm not seeing it. Um, so let me see what uh, lat. Um, new chords, but this is not where I need them to be. New angles also not where I need it to be. That's pretty hideous, though. Um, this is an astronomical function that's sitting out here for some reason. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh, here we go. This is close. This says if you rotate the world so that um, CL and, you know, to a given point is at zero, zero, it tells you where you've moved long lat to, a given point, if, you know, where you've moved other points in the world if you've done that. But that's not what we need. Slippy, that gives us orthographic coordinates. Constants, okay, that's, that's, these are dictionaries. These are, we're no longer doing functions here. Okay. So, I, I'm very suspicious of this. Give me a second here. Because I know that full mat, um, I know I've converted this to, um, to code in other languages. Um, unless I haven't, because I am wrong a lot. Okay, so let's take a look here at BC Git uh, Rosetta. We're going to grab phi1 out of everything. Interesting. Do we have a fee anywhere? Um, not really. Um, sad thing is I'm pretty sure I implemented this in JavaScript at one point. Okay, that was not a good idea. Rep minus L. Let's see who has... Okay, hang on. I need to reset this. Oh, cool. Have I broken it? Um, I think I'm okay now. Um, might be easier if we just did fee one. Okay. Now at this point, if I haven't lost anyone in uh, chat, I will be very impressed with myself. Because I've lost myself. Oh my god, there's still a lot of people in chat. Hello to all you people in chat who are either hanging out or at least pretending to hang out. I really appreciate it. Um, God damn it. Um, yeah, this, if I've done this in Perl, I'm going to be really upset with myself. Uh, so, okay, I need to re do this. Hang on. I think I've broken this screen. So I'm going to kill this screen, which is fine. Create a new one, which is still doing this, which means something is wrong. Okay, bummer. Um, let me do this. Reset Control J. And no, it's still not quite doing what I want. Well, maybe it is. So I'm going to find every... Okay, let me go into BC. Okay, no, it's still not. Hang on. Um... Control right mouse. There should be a a reset function here somewhere. Do full reset. If that doesn't work, I'll have to bring up a new X term. Okay. Alrighty. So what I'm going to do here is This finds all the Perl scripts in, under BC git, and then I'm going to xargs grep minus i fee one them. See what that gives us. And some of it just tells us we, we have files that don't really exist, because Emacs is really bad about creating things like this. Um, okay, so it doesn't appear anywhere in there. Now, my HTML files contain JavaScript, which is why this may show up in there. And in case you're wondering, you're saying at some point, is it, wouldn't it be easier just to recreate this than to keep trying to get what you're doing? And the answer to that is, of course, uh, 
absolutely correct. Um, and let's see. And is the reason I can't do that because it returns three values? And also, this is a... Uh, what the hell? Why do I have desk messed up there? Okay. Maybe the readme will tell me... I don't think it will, actually. Um... And this is basically the same code in different languages. Um, and it's not tremendously impressive. These are all procedural languages. It's just basically a very... Um, a variant on... Um, it's just a variant on, you know, you change the function name, you put math dot in front of it, all that stuff. It's not, not very deep. Why do I have DSCCs floating around everywhere now? Did I mess something up really badly? Um, hopefully if I do this, okay, yeah, it's not, it's not doing that here. Uh, all right. 90% of programming is being frustrated, so I'm not, I can't tell you this doesn't happen a lot. All right. Um, Okay. So... There are other ways to generate the, uh, the, the great circle path that are, are better than drawing a straight line and projecting it into the sphere. Um, you can find perpendicular vectors for... You can find the perpendicular vector of the... of the... of the, um, of the plane that contains the two the, you know, the arrival and destination, th those are the same thing. The two points that you're looking at, and then uh, use a vector calculation to get a, it, an accurate and fairly, uh, uh, you know, distance con um, conserving um, a point of, uh, distance conserving function that parameterizes your flight. I'm going to go ahead and look at the, um, people did give answers to this, but not very good ones. Um... And see, this is the approach that's given using cross products. The problem is no one is giving him a, um, a short form answer. No one is actually giving him the, a closed form. Uh, and this is a different, very similar problem um, that he even mentions the other problem in this one. But again, um, let's see, okay. Find the coordinates of A, B, and X. Uh, then you can orthogonally project everything onto the plane. Um, interesting. Um, that's just converting, s and then you can orthogonally project everything onto the plane containing A, B, and X. Oh, that is actually kind of nice. Um, huh. Because if you have three points in space, they necessarily form a plane. Um, so what he's saying here is you can take your three points, you know, your departure, your arrival, and the third point C that you want, convert into a plane. Um, and this guy actually gives some code here that doesn't work, but I mean... Um, oh, hang on. Yeah, I, I, I get the feeling his, he's saying his code is not working. Um, so, so this is interesting using the planar approach. Um, coordinates that are... So we can go back to... And of course, if we do this, we can go back to our friend um, GeoGebra and, and draw out the problem. Um, that is quite interesting. Now, the question is, if you're in a plane... Um, through three points, that plane is not going to touch the sphere necessarily. In fact, it's probably not going to touch the sphere. Um, 
And so the question is, if that's not going to touch the sphere, even if you find the shortest, is it going to help to find the sort of um, the perpendicular vector that it, that it you know is it the shortest in the line, uh, and then project that back into um, back onto the sphere? All right. I think this is going to be a great waste of time, so that's why I'm doing it. You have to remember my my priorities are messed up. Um, let me go ahead and sign in. Uh, am I signed in? Uh, let me sign in before I do this. Uh, let's. Oh, I am signed in. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to create. I have no idea what the hell I'm doing. Um, I'll just go to 3D and start creating there. And again, the idea here is we're going to reduce the problem to two dimensions, or we're going to try at least. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is sphere, um, center. This is the Earth, except it looks really ugly today. Okay. Come back to that. And good. Okay, that's our sphere there. We're probably going to do some stuff with it. Um, let's go ahead and add two points to it. Um, all right, this mathics will maybe have a use finally. Um, okay, hang on. This sphere is of uh, radius four. Let's make it radius one and zoom in. Uh, why the hell is our viewpoint not uh, moving with us? Hello, we want to see below this. Um, is there? Do I have this? No, the browser should be full. Yeah, full size. Um, Uh, well, I'm hoping we're going to reduce this to Jesus freaking. Oh, by the way, one cool thing you can do here that you really won't be able to see that well is you can um, you can spin the coordinate system, and it'll keep spinning, or or it won't when it wants to. There we go. This probably looks terrible on the stream because uh, you don't have uh, you know we have low frame refresh, but that's kind of cool. Okay. Screw it. You get to be a sphere of. Of wait a minute. Wait. Oh, B is a point on the sphere. So where the hell? Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what the hell I'm doing here. Why the hell can't I scroll down? Alrighty. All right, well, we'll use the top half of the sphere. Okay, now we're going to have Mathix compute where uh, to very simply, and it only works if I do it with my uh, library. Come on, really? Okay, I think this is actually good. So spherical XYZ coordinates, we'll say the longitude is minus 105 degrees, the latitude is 35 degrees, and because we're on a sphere of radius 2, we need to make this 2. And let's actually get that roughly to be a point. So that's the three-dimensional point we want. Um, I'm I'm really not used to this. This is kind of weird. Um, point. That's not at all what I meant to do. So let me give this as a point. There we go. And now I should be able to just put the word point in front of this. And it will accept this as a point. Maybe. There it is. Point C. Um, okay. Unfortunately, even though I'm not hypoglycemic, uh, I do need to be going at this moment. I will try to come back later today. Thank you very much, everyone, who stayed in the stream. Really appreciate the viewers. Uh, even if you're not viewing, I just appreciate the fact that you're helping get viewers. 
I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now, and I plan to pick it up within an hour or two, but I can't promise anything. Thank you for watching.